Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and um, we're here this morning to unveil some exciting plans for the 2018 carnival slash calypso season. Yes, it's that time of year again already, and um, we have with us members from the Takeover 10 Soka Village International, and um, they're about to unleash on the general public a very exciting event. I'm not going to steal their fund, I'll allow the tent manager to disclose exactly what this is. But this particular event is in collaboration with the Ancillary Fish Fry Association, and like I said, the Takeover Tent um, Soka Village International. The representative for Ancillary Canneries, Honorable Dominic Fede, who was supposed to be here today, have expressed you know, his joy at being um, the host community for this event and he expressed his warmest regards to the Calypsonians for the 2018 season. And we expect to have a bumper carnival season. The last time I checked, um, all major flights have been totally booked coming into St. Lucia. And we expect some exciting Calypsos for the, from the Calypsonians. Last year, we know we had a great season and we're expecting an even greater 2018, starting, of course, with this event on Friday, the 25th of May that we're here to learn a lot more about. So without any further ado, I now invite Mr. Cecil Charles to the podium to explain what this event is all about. Mr. Charles. Good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure once again to be here. It's the time of the year, which is a joyous part for me, Calypso season. Of course, as we all know that Takeover Ten Soka Village has been in collaboration for the last five years. And we continue to develop our product in terms of ensuring that we are able to give a good account of ourselves to the paying public and to our supporters that we have been in existence, of course, from 1981. Our first showing was in 1982. And of course, the 10th founder, TOT, was actually Get Through, who we all know passed away a couple of years ago. We have always tried to ensure that we leave that legacy and in 2017 we started that theme Kaiso legacy and what we are doing is actually continuing with it what we are doing is that we are ensuring that our community base is taken care of and TOT actually started that off a couple of years ago and we realized that we need to re redirect our focus in that direction so just like a couple of years ago I think it is 10 years ago we did have our opening in ancillary this year, we are very happy that the Ancillary Fish Fry Committee has decided to collaborate with us in terms of recognizing a lot of the Calypsonians who have come through the TOT stage and have come from the village of Ancillary. And of course, one of the iconic person is Her Black. Her Black this year is actually celebrating 32 years. And we said, okay, with the Ancillary com com Committee, Fish Fry Committee, it would be a nice start for TOT, of, which is of course the home of Her Black and also Black Pearl Wally and a couple of the others. So coming on this Friday, Friday the 25th, we have our big opening, the big show, which is called Herbie and Friends. And what we'll be seeing is that there will be a lot of vintage, timeless calypsos together with a lot of new songs that our artists, some of our artists, will be putting out there for our opening, which would be Wednesday the 6th of June. So it means you are actually getting a prelude of what is to come. And I could tell you from what you are going to get on Friday at the Herbian Friends Show, you will not want to miss the other Calypso shows for TOT. Apart from our opening show, which is Wednesday the 6th, we are going to have what is referred to as a nostalgic event, which we are actually referring to it as a signature event. And it will be an inaugural, inaugural event, which is titled Timeless Panlipso. That event will actually portray or see in performance our Calypsonians who will be backed up by a pan side, a pan orchestra. It's a novel idea, it's a new idea. And I could tell you, that event will be held at Sandals, Hals, Sandals Halcyon. And just imagine, Calypsonians being backed up on Pan. And 
that show, I could tell you, it will actually be built as a pre-Father's Day show. So it means you have to give your father a gift for that Sunday. But the show is a Saturday, so that's why I refer to it as a pre-Father's Day show. So that is one of our signature events for this year. And as I said, it's inaugural. It's going to be an annual show. And we, there again, we are collaborating with some other entities that will, because what we are doing, we are branching off. We are going into the community. And we realize that we need to, to do that. We are also speaking to Babuno community and the Mikut Carnival Committee. The plans are not yet finalized for those two communities, but I need to tell you, they are well on the way. So you need to look out for a bumper season with TOT in terms of changing the landscape of Calypso and not allowing it to be a situation where we only think of the Calypso finals. So look out for the Herbie and Friends show coming this Friday, the 25th. Tickets are only $20, I need to tell you, only $20. So just imagine you're going to get something like over 22 songs for $20. So it means it's less than a dollar a song. It's less than a dollar a song. And to get that kind of thing, I mean, who, pays, who would not want to take advantage of that opportunity? The tickets are available at Steve Barber Shop. It's also available at the Ancillary Constituency Council office. And it is also available at, with TOT members. CDF has some tickets I need to tell you also. So, we are heading down to Ancillary. Friday is the Hobby and Friends, Ancillary Parsi, Castries Parsi, everybody be down there with us to celebrate with Hobby Black 32 years of community service through Calypso. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cecil Charles. And um, I know when I started off, I said that the Minister was a little delayed, and he did promise to be here, and um, he have expressed his excitement about this event and is looking forward to um, all the other events for Carnival 2018. So he has just made his way. We'll give him a few minutes to compose himself. But whilst we do that, I know some of you are probably wondering, well, where's the star himself, Her Black, just to inform you that um, a number of our Calypsonians and soccer artists have been traveling the world as of late. And um, Her Black happened to be one of them. Her Black just um, came off from a great concert in Canada. And um, we expect that he's a little jet lag right now, so he needs to relax and get his act together for that big concert on Friday. But in his stead, we have his wonderful sister, a Calisonian herself, um, who have made waves with TOT over the years. So she's going to tell us a little more about the show on Friday, as well as about her brother and his involvement in Calypso over the years. So I welcome Blackpool to the podium. Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everybody. My name is Agnes Chester Blackpool, sister to her black, and Tony Sylvester Lewis. Well, um, yes, Takeover Tent is my home. Not was, but is, because everybody wants to take me away from Takeover Tent, but I'm still there. And this year, we're going to have something big. We're going to start with my brother, 42 years in Calypso. Um, my brother has been struggling for a long time. From the time he touched stage, it's either her black going to be king or her black not going to be king. <laughs> he had it this year in his hand, but for some reason, it went <laughs> out. But it's okay, and he's still there. Um, well, the happiest thing about it this year, for so long, I told my brother to write my songs for me. And he goes... You have your right already, which is Jati and Fis. But he always saying, your time will come. Last year, we was going to do a show with Invader. And then he said, I have, a, I have a song for you. And I said, okay, no problem. And he sing the song, and I said, me? Hmm, that song not for me, because that's what Black Pearl. My, my song is Telele and Ruru. But what I'm hearing, that's straight from <laughs> Black. So I said, okay, my brother, no problem. And I just pass on this. And some months ago, he said, Black Pearl, you're not coming for the song. And I said, okay, brother, I'm in Sufre, I'm coming down. When I reached, he had the paper in his hand. I'm looking at the song, but I'm looking at him. And I said, but that's not my song. And he said, well, try it. So when I went home, I tried the song, and it was okay. So I said, okay, I'm going to have one of the songs. But when I look at it, I said, what's going on? Brother, you leaving me on one foot? He said, Black Pearl, what are you talking about? I said, I want another song. Because if I have a good song, I want another one. Because every year, I have a Patwa song, and I have an a, a English song. So I want two good songs. 
He said, what about your songs? They're not good. I said, it's not that. I just want to sing two of your songs. So he said, okay. He was sitting home and he gets some news and he said, okay, I have another song for you. And when he gave me the other song, I like the other song better. So I said, okay, I'm going with that. So I'm very happy to sing my brother's song, to be on stage and singing my brother's song. It gave me a confidence. I, I know I had it in, but this year I'm going to bring it out. I'm going to be a different black pearl. People who come out to see that um, dress the way I usually dress with my tights and everything out. <laughs> This session is going to be different <laughs> because the songs are different and they have good lyrics and I love the songs. Now, I want everybody to come out in, in Unslurry because me and my brother was born in Unslurry. I started singing in 1988. I remember that because I came from Eng I went to England with my sister and when I came back, I said, okay, I'm going to do something with myself. But my brother was already on stage, and I was already singing his songs. So I said, okay, why don't join my brother? I came in to take over tent. They accept me. Mr. Chalo was, wasn't there at all, at all, at all. That was long, long ago. But he came and met me there. We have our ups, we have our downs, but I'm still there. So what I'm asking the people of Unslurry and all around to come to Unslurry and see my brother do his thing. 32 years in Calypso, and I'm going I'm, I'm to be standing right there by him. And I'm going to show him that we, my mother's child, Amoricia Lewis, Black Lagoon, <laughs> is still standing. And one thing my mother always saying, when my brother's song used to play, she said, say shma ka fende mwe vini ho. I always watching my mother because she don't have no nose. And she always saying that. So I'm watching what kind of nose that going up. But it's when she was dying, I remembered, I remembered, I had to remember everything, all the good things and all the bad things. I remembered, but mama, what Mama was saying was right. And she was saying that she was proud of us. So even if she's not there now, I'm going to feel happy. And I wish she was there to see her daughter and her son on the same stage doing his thing 32 years in Calypso. So I want everybody to come and enjoy it and give him all what he deserved from the starting to the end. Thank you. Thank you, Blackpool, and indeed you've made St. Lucia proud. You've also made a community of Ansari proud, and you said 1988, so that means 30 years. So I'll have a chat with the minister, I think, for Junior Creole. We need to do a Blackpool in concert in Ansari, celebrating 30 years. And speaking of the minister, um, I now invite Honorable Dominic Fede, Parliamentary Representative for Ansari Canneries, to say a few words about this event. And just to backtrack a little, I know that um, the minister is very proud of the community, and hence the reason why he instilled the return of the Ansari Fish Fry. And like we've been saying, the Ansari Fish Fry Committee is very much involved in this event, and we've seen a number of artists from the community taking to the stage at um, this Friday Fish Fry Blackpool. You've been on the stage at that event as well. So without any further ado, I now invite Honorable Dominic Fede to say a few words about this event and about Carnival on the whole and the thrust from his ministry and the involvement in Carnival as a whole overall. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, members of the Takeover Tent, uh, Black Pearl, it's really good to see you this morning. And a, an old friend, Lady Lynn, really good to see you here as well, members of the media and those of us, uh, those of you joining us by television. Um, Tony, thank you so very much. I think I stand here very, very proud of your brother as the Member of Parliament. And um, I said yesterday in the Parliament um, that he is an iconic figure. And I say so because it's very, very um, tenacious for someone to uh, be performing and be good and be relevant for 32 years. I think it is a very special feat and it requires a special individual so sometimes we take anniversaries for granted, but if you think of a lot of athletes and celebrities and people in their various fields who find it very difficult to make it for three decades, uh, it is a special feat and it should be commended. And it really speaks volumes of the type of family that you have come from. And your mom, I'm sure she wasn't only proud of you, but I think that she instilled in you and your brother a special kind of discipline, a special kind of character that can keep you going on the stage 
for so long. And, you know, what makes it even more special is that um, your brother, uh, at times there were controversial decisions which may have gone against him. And uh, he is still there uh, performing and giving his all and being an ambassador to uh, the art form of Calypso and continuing to do such an amazing job. So I know that Ancelore is very, very proud. And I know that Friday will be a smash. And I know that it's going to be a wonderful event. So I want to take this opportunity to invite all of St. Lucia to come and to be part of uh, this history-making event. And I think it's befitting that we're having it in his own backyard, the village of Ancelore. So Take Over Tent, I thank you for uh, teaming up and supporting the Ancelore Fish Fry Committee, who at this point deserves uh, the very highest level of commendation for their hard work and their stellar contribution in bringing back the fish fry thus far. They have done a remarkable job. And this is all part of uh, this initiative. And Herb Black was very much um, central to helping us to arrive at this stage of resurgence in the ancillary fish fry. So we're excited, we're happy, and we're glad that you're joining us. I hope that Lady Lynn's presence here means that she will be on the stage as well. Um, and I am looking forward to seeing her performance as well. Um, this is part of our government's thrust to support a lot of our musicians and give voice and to uh, adequately invest in the local music industry. You know, we have said a lot um, as policymakers over the years about the state of the music industry and the state of the culture sector in general. And I think that we've paid lip service to it. And we haven't given the art form uh, the level of support and investment that we should. And we have failed our country over the years. And I'm very, very glad to see that, you know, my government is making a shift. And that shift is, is let us discontinue spending all of this money to promote a lot of the foreign artists that we do for jazz, for example. And let us now invest in our own festivals, our own people, our own culture. I was absolutely proud. One day I was in a, one night um, after work in Toronto, I was in a bar recently and um, being entertained by some travel agents after a function. And, and there was the Denry segment music, you know, coming over in Toronto. And, you know, I got goosebumps. I was absolutely proud that here is St. Lucian music um, in this metropolis, in this big city, where there are so many cultures that are competing and so many songs and so many artists that are better, um, with better capacity and with better budgets and perhaps with a better team around them. And, and you know what? Here is Denry segment making it over the airwaves in the city. And I think it is an example of, of what can happen to our music industry if we are methodological about it, if we are deliberate about it, and if we don't leave it perchance, but if we actually give our artists the very best chance they can to become the very best version of themselves, then I believe that we will arrive at seeing more and more of our um, performing artists uh, in, in various art forms. And I think that you can also apply that to sports. We have built many facilities, but um, we haven't had structured development programs that you can point to, which is why when I worked in the private sector, I saw this as a big gap. And you would have known for many years, I um, did work and, and, and conceptualize and executed the Sandals Cricket Academy. And we did that for about 16 years, and it made an in enormous contribution to the development of young cricketers. But once they moved from under 15, uh, and, and there was a void in development programs, we saw where the, uh, the, the cricketers became very naked, if you wish, and they were exposed to uh, the international game and the standards that are required. And I, I think it's the same with the music industry. Unless you have a structured development program, and unless governments take the lead, then I believe that um, we will just, perchance, 
uh, have a regional artist and we will perchance have a hit now and then. But we have to be a lot more deliberate about it and I would like to see that. And I want to promise you here this morning that um, sitting in the cabinet, I will do everything that I can to influence that change in our country. I want to give you a little personal story. When I hosted Juna Creole two years ago, we had a subvention from the FRC. It was $6,000 to host the entire thing. I mean, you think of it, you need a stage, you need a um, sound system, you need to set up all of the booths, you need a lot of stuff. And I'm proud to say that this year, uh, the government has allocated, I think the budget previously was about thirty or 40000 but now it's 600000 so you see a deliberate um, attempt and a deliberate ploy by this government to invest in the culture, the indigenous culture of St. Lucia. There's a great nexus between our culture and tourism. And our culture is not just something, while it gives definition to who we are, and I think it makes us understand who we are as a people, but I think it also helps economically because then our culture can become a staple within the tourism product offering. People come to our destination because of the way we live and the way we dance and the food that we eat. This is what makes us unique. And you know, every single travel research now suggests that people are traveling for unique experiences. People are not coming uh, to see a mirror of what they do in their own everyday scenarios. They are coming for difference. And, you know, millennials who will make up about 50% of the travel industry in the next seven to 10 years are looking and they have said very loudly that they need unique experiences. And that is the biggest stimulant for them to travel. And we have a great opportunity in St. Lucia to fuse and to better define our Creoleness our Frenchness, our Britishness, our Europeanness. And if we can bring all of these cultures together, our Caribbeanness, and we bring this wonderful fusion of what we have become as St. Lucians, then I think that we would have a unique opportunity among destinations and nations around the world. So there is a lot here at stake if we can get this particular part of our development right. I want to say to you, thanks again, and I look forward to welcoming you, along with Black Pearl, of course, to the beautiful village of Ancillary on Friday. See you then, take over tent, and I hope that St. Lucia will be coming out in large numbers to support her black and the cast. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And um, what better endorsement can this event get? I know, Cecil Charles, you're very, you're like a proud father right now. <laughs> and um, one of the things the minister mentioned was the nexus between um, the arts and uh, tourism. And I'm going to bring up a lady, Lady Lynn, who besides the Calypso stage, I've seen her at some of the hotels entertaining the guests. And let me tell you, if you think you've seen Lady Lynn on a Calypso stage entertaining, you haven't seen anything yet. The, the, the way she's able to get some of those guests to come on board and form that train, it, it's simply amazing. So I now invite Lady Lynn to tell us a little about her involvement in this um, concert. On, well, it's not a concert. I shouldn't call it a concert. I think it's going to be a, a jam session, a party, a, a celebration of, of her black and what have you. So Lady Lynn... The microphone is yours. Good morning to everyone. Um, yes, I must say, I'm very happy to be here. I must say thank you to Honorable Dominique. Um, TOT, I used to be in Ambassador's Calypso Tent, and then I moved over to TOT. The welcome was wow. Um, I must say I'm very happy there. For years I've been here, there right now. And Chalo knows that um, I have stopped competing, really. But he's after me, you know, Lynn, you've got to do something. So I decided to 
come back in the arena this year. But let me say, her Black, I have known her Black for many years, and I used to be doing the background vocals for Calypso before I became a Calypsonian. And I remember her Black's first time backing, in, backing him up, and, you know, he's such a humble person. I must say that. We have a very, very good relationship, and I, I, I like the way he has a unique voice, a voice that you can't forget. Um, I would say I would like y'all, everyone, his fans, everybody, I want y'all to come to that special night. You know, life is short, and we don't know when we're going. So all of us, let's make an effort to come on on Friday, I will be there for sure. I will be performing new and old songs. Um, Black Pearl and I, <laughs> we are buddies, you know. We, she will be there. Dennis James, I don't know if you, you may not recall Dennis James, but Dennis James has been there for umpteen times, long before me. Um, not in the Calypso arena, but in other genre of music he, he sang. And he's also singing Calypso. I think he sang last year, year before, year before, yes. And he will be there too. So you have, a, you have different people coming in. Even newcomers will be there at Ancillary Fish Fry. I would like to see everybody come. Um, it is a pleasure. It is wonderful for me to be here with and to say that I will be there on Friday with Her Black. Her Black is my special, special Calypsodian. He has worked hard. He has had his ups and downs, all of us. But we are still there. So give us what we supposed to get right now, not when we did. We don't need it when we did right now. So come and celebrate in Ancillary with her black. I must say thank you to GIS and thank you to everybody. Charlo have been working hard for job. <laughs> He's been working really hard and his wife and the, the other members of TOT. So please come out and be with us at this special occasion. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Lady Lynn. The next individual I'm going to call to the podium, I first encountered this gentleman a few years ago in Canada, incidentally. And also, incidentally, he was in the company of Her Black at the Her Black concert. It was Her Black. Dennis James and in Veda, I think it was several years ago, and I saw him perform for the very first time, and I was indeed wowed by his performance. And I'm happy that he is now here in St. Lucia, and he'll be part of this Who Black and Friends um, event on Friday. So I now call to the podium, Mr. Dennis James. Thank you very much. Like I used to say, in, in, um, at this present moment, I live in Canada, Montreal, Canada. But most of the times they would ask me exactly where I'm from. I always say I'm originally from the island of St. Lucia, the beautiful island of St. Lucia. This is my third year in Calypso in um, St. Lucia. I've been singing for quite a while in, um, in Canada. I've won the Canadian Calypso Monarch three times and um, second many, many times. But it was always a, always a pleasure of mine to be in St. Lucia. I always wanted to be on the stage with the great names like the Lynns and the the Black Pearls, and, and I tried it about three years ago, and I got the opportunity to do that, and now I'm back for the third time. It will be a pleasure to be in Ancillary. I don't recall singing in Ancillary, so I'm, I'm looking forward for that. I started a very, very long time ago. I, th I think, in my mind, I think I'm the grandfather, too. I think I'm the grandfather to all the singers here. Uh, I'm new to, to Calypso singing in St. Lucia, but I think I'm the oldest in all of the singers. In the, um, I'm 71 years old, and I'm think <laughs> 71, and I think um, <laughs> I'm the grandfather. So um, I'm looking forward to uh, Ancillary. Looking forward to Ancillary, and I hope I do see you there. Thank you very much. I think I need to ask you, what, what part of St. Lucia are you originally from, Mr. James? Castries. From Castries, okay. Yeah, 
well, whatever your parents did or whatever you were doing as a, as a young boy when you were in St. Lucia, you did something right to be looking this well at 71. The, the CDC, Lady Lynn. Okay, Lady Lynn said it's the, the CDC. Maybe back then there was no asbestos in the ceiling, Lady Lynn. Okay, that's, <laughs> that's, that's for another show, like they would say. So, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. You have all the information you need. All that's necessary right now is for you to go on out, purchase your tickets early, come down to ancillary, um, I know Charles spoke about the liner, but you also need to remember that it is the one place that you could come. You could come early and get some great seafood. I mean, Ansari, there's no doubt. I've been there several times myself, and it's the place that you could go down and get seafood. The, the, the dock is right there. It's at the waterfront, so you know it's fresh seafood. It's not no frozen overnight, anything of that nature. Fresh seafood on Friday. And of course, if you love your barbecue chicken and what have you, you could get a little bit of that as well. So Herbie and Friends on Friday. Um, Charlo, I don't think you gave, I think I have the line up here. You, did you mention? Okay, we have Blackpool, of course, Invader, Lady Lean, Wally, who's also from Ancillary, Moggy. What part of the universe Moggy is coming from? I know he could be anywhere between China and Switzerland at this, at this point in time. We have Morgi, Ambi, who made waves in Trinidad this year for Soka Monarch in Trinidad. Um, Alpha, Alpha former Soka Monarch. We have Nilka, Nilka is from Ansari. Flawless, from Ansari. Sire, from Ansari as well. Lil Nick, Mighty Joker. We have the USVI King, John Gotti. We have Juliana, Sara Lee, Chocolate, and this is her second year in Calypso, I think it is, Chocolate. Dennis James, of course, we've mentioned. Bruno, Weatherman, Achiever, Senator, Ticaro, Esnard, and I see her a whole lot more. Maybe I might just sing a Calypso on <laughs> Friday. I think I have some time between now and then to pen at least a voice on a chorus for Friday. So ladies and gentlemen, it's the Ansari Fish Fry Association in collaboration of Takeover Tent and Soka Village International. Herbie and Friends, the legacy continues this Friday, 25th May, in Ansari from 8 p.m. Lucian Kaiso at his best. See you there, and thank you. Um, I just have... A few questions. The first is to just briefly describe right now what Calypso's competition is with the Denry segment and Soka, if any of you can speak on that. I always love that question. Calypso is Calypso. Um, one of the things is that we try to make a differentiation between Calypso and Soka. So, for example, people talk about power Soka. There's nothing called Power Soaker. Power was a company in Trinidad, the Light and Power Company, that sponsored Soaker. Okay? So it was, the, the show was built as Power, the Power Soaker. It's just like if Digicel was sponsored, they were the title sponsor, they would refer to their thing as Digicel Soaker Competition or whatever it is. That's what it is. So let us, first of all, you know, clear that air. If you listen to Scrunters and the Barons and the Kitcheners, and the sparrows and so on. Pele from St. Lucia. They were musicians. They did not refer to themselves as Calypsonians or soccer artists. All right? So what it meant is that you go back to Pele time and kitchen and them. There was that upward beat. That was, there was Calypso and a lot of it, good lyrical contents, the melody, the arrangements, was thing you could have danced to it and so on. I mean, Soka has always been there. Okay, Soka has always been there. So let us not fool ourselves. Yes, you now have this thing about Calypsonians and Soka artists as though there is a difference. There is not. Okay, we are proud that, you know, we could infuse our, our look. So, for example, the Denry segment. Suburbans so, so and Mighty, they actually started with TOT in the Calypso arena, I could tell you that. Okay, 
Yes, they have grown and so on. And of course, they are making ways, which we are very, very proud of. What we hope that doesn't happen is that persons from outside take advantage of it and our, we are not able to benefit as we're supposed to. Well, if you notice like from last year, a lot of the Trini artists were using the beat. A lot of the Trini artists were using the beat. How does that benefit us? How does that benefit our original producers and so on? That is what we're supposed to be concerned about. Because yes, we are there in, in international world, but are we getting the true benefits in terms of our artists benefiting from it? And these are things that we really have to take serious hamstock of. Because at the end of the day, Mighty Serbans, the Degris segment, um, the Lady Lanes, and all of them will become old. But we don't want to be in a situation where we have to be looking for charity for them. So if they, they add, they, they trade, the art, the trade, the talent that they have could ensure that in the later part of their life, that that is able to take care of them. That is what we need to focus on. So yes, we are happy of the Degris segment. It is a solution thing but it has to remain a St. Lucian thing in the sense that St. Lucia benefits properly from it. Thank you. I think you may, you may have to come back. Um, we just had a shocker to learn that one of the Calypsonians was, was 70 year, 71 years old. Um, so I'm assuming, because you all keep um, asking to not wait until you all are gone for us to enjoy what you'll have to offer. Um, I'm assuming that you all are trying to attract younger people to come and appreciate what's going to happen on Friday. Um, so the question is, how are these innovations, which is the Herbie and Friends and the Father's Day concert that you didn't mention, how are those innovations going to help or how do you think it will help attract younger people? Okay, it does because TOT and Soka Village um, in all our productions, it has been varied and it has actually brought in a lot of young persons. So we have the little Nicks, the Nilkas, the Trish, you know, a number of them. In fact, a lot of the artists who came through the school system have actually become members of the tents and so on. We know, um, I mean, Keisha, who just won the, she's actually a member of TOT, Ambi, Ricky T's, Alphas, just name them. So we have provided that opportunity, though at one time we were hardcore Calypso, but in terms of our productions and so on, we have always made it possible for our artists to be able to get that stage, to be able to perform their craft. And that has happened in TOT. And people will tell you that when you come to a TOT so-called village show, you get everything. The young persons, I need to tell you, are coming in. Even this year, what we have found out, particularly among the young women, that a lot of them are coming in to sing Calypso. So we always hear this thing about Calypso dying. Calypso will never die. We die, but Calypso will not die. It's a hard form, it's a people thing, it's a hard beat, it's part of the social consciousness. So come to Ancillary on Friday, and you will see from Dennis James, you will see as young as the youngest person who is the ancillary competitor for the school's Calypso show from the ancillary primary school. You will see her performing. So we take them from BBs and we bring them all up, I could tell you. <laughs> all right, that's okay. And I don't know if you would want to reveal any of your secrets, but what can we look forward to from the takeover 10 this year? Are we going to hear about DSH or um, what politicians are we going to hear about? Well, the thing is, I mean, there are so many topics that we speak about. We don't only speak about, um, and remember the Calypsonian is the voice, the voice of the people, okay? So yes, the Calypsonian with their writers and so on, they see, they look at the issues and so on. Apart from the, pol the politics, the political aspect of things, you have a lot of social things. And I guess some of the social things is based on the political policies and so on, okay? So yes, there will be a lot of Pekong. There will be a lot of Calypso. There will be a lot of... Love Calypso, I need to tell you. Love Calypso. And the grandfather, you know, is still in love. The grandfather is still in love. So that is a big, a, a big, a, a big thing for persons, you know. So the groovies, the, 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 the soca, the Calypso, which has been there from the time Calypso started, 
you'll be able to enjoy everything because we give a total package, a total mix, and our product is versatile. Okay, thank you, Mr. Charles. And um, let me just ensure, Claudia, that um, there will be a ticket on a desk for the very first TOT Soka Village oh, yeah. tent so that she will come and experience all the excitement for herself. And I guarantee her at that show that Dennis James will not be wearing the colors of the flag of Canada. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be wearing the colors of the flag of St. Lucia on that first show. I know Cecil gave a hint as to why the red, but I think on that very first show he will be wearing some different colors. So once again, thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and again, see you at the show on Friday. <laughs>